Hello, Glenn here from Digital Photography Courses. Today we're going to be talking about the Type A Poloscope provided by Move Shoot Move and also the very welcome Right Angle uh, Finder. So before we start talking about those, just I'd like to talk a little bit first about tripods. And this is my favourite tripod. I love this tripod. This is, I've had this for years and years and years. It's a Manfrotto 190 XB Pro. Um, I like the weight of it. I like the fact it's got snap lock legs as opposed to twist lock legs. Um, I like the fact that I can extend the legs outwards so it goes really, really low. And I especially like the fact that I can lift the column and flip it for either um, sort of top-down photography or video filming um, or for sort of photography, macro photography where it's over a table and you need to be able to get really, really close. So that little ability there I really, really like. So that's all the good news. Now, unfortunately, the bad news is it doesn't go tall enough. It's tall enough for normal photography. I don't like extending the legs too high. So, but you know, sort of halfway is not too bad and you can lock them off um, for normal photography. But when I'm using the move, shoot, move, particularly with the polar scope, then what actually happens is because of my latitude, you know, we're at 52 degrees north, then I have to get down really, really, really low and almost kneel on the floor um, to get a sight picture through the poloscope. And I get neck ache, and I get knees, and I get back ache, and it's really inconvenient. So to this point, what I've been doing, instead of using my favorite travelable sort of uh, uh, tripod, I use, pop this one over here, this one. So this one here, a studio tripod, lot, lot taller, goes probably out of the frame. There we go. So it goes really, really tall. Uh, but the benefit of this is when I pop the poloscope on, particularly with a little bit of extension, so about six or eight inches, I'm now at a much more comfortable height to do my polar alignment. So but the thing is, this is a studio tripod, it's very heavy. Um, it's great for if I'm in the garden, not a problem at all. Um, you know, it's ideal for that. But as I say, <laughs> taking this around me or taking this on holiday with me is really a bit too much. So thankfully now, because of this little gadget, the right angle finder, we can now pop this onto the back of the scope There we go. This can be now be a lot, lot lower down. And even at this height, this is just beautifully comfortable for sight in the picture. And even if I use my small tripod, then it's a lot, lot more comfortable. So, you know, very worthwhile piece to get, very useful. Okay, so that's the kind of the general uh, setup. So let's look at the products uh, sort of individually and see what comes with the products. So. Let's take them apart. So on the polar scope, as I say, there's actually a Type A and a Type B polar scope, and uh, this is the uh, Type A. And you can see there's a little spirit level on there, so make sure you get it level. I did have to adjust this very, very slightly. Uh, when you look through, you'll see the reticles, and when the bubble level was centered, the reticles weren't quite lined up. But that was a simple matter of just undoing that tiny little Allen key uh, I think it might be a 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen key. Just undo that and turn that slightly, and got that got that lined up. This little screw thread there is for the illuminator, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then we have two knurled adjustment knobs. And excuse me, the purpose of these is this one at the back. This focuses the reticle. So when you look through the uh, poloscope, you'll see a reticle, and what, this is a bit like the dioptic adjustment on your camera. So if you've seen on the back of your camera, there's a little dial there and you can change that and move the dioptic adjustment. So what this allows you to do is you rotate this until the reticle becomes super duper sharp. And then halfway down the barrel, there's this screw as well. 
And the purpose of this one, yeah, I've got it quite tight, is as you rotate the barrel, then you're actually focusing on the start. Now what I did, I checked this by focusing on something as far away as possible. And then as you turn this, you'll see that object come into focus. And then you finally, once you've got it where you need it, you lock, turn this knurled ring until that locks in position and you've then locked that focus point. Okay, so they're just the little adjustments you need to do. And then if we just look around here, you've got three grub screws. And those grub screws are for adjusting the laser. Um, I did actually check the laser, I did actually adjust it. Uh, the way to adjust it is find yourself a distant object, pop it in the mount, and then as you rotate the polar scope to different directions, the reticle, center of the reticle should stay centered on the, um, on the object that you're focused on. And Mine was very, very slightly off, really not a problem, probably half a degree or something like that, maybe a degree. And um, I did actually go in there and fine tune it. And now it's actually set beautifully so that as I rotate it to 90 degrees all the way around, then the center point stays spot on. But in fairness, it probably was accurate enough straight out of the box. Remember the MSN is really intended for wide angle lenses. So, um, you know, it would be more than accurate enough, probably straight out of the box. If you do need to adjust it, there's a really, really good video by Alex showing you how to do it. But basically what you're doing is you're just loosening and tightening these screws a tiny amount, quarter of a turn at a time, and then gradually the reticle inside will move left, right, up and down until you get it uh, on target. This hole here is for the illuminator. And the illuminator is this little piece of kit. Uh, that screws into the top. These are all kind of 3D printed. There we go. And we have a switch which says on, flash, off. Pretty self-explanatory. You press it, it will flash. You press it again, it will stay on. You press it again, it will go off. And you can't see it here in the daytime, but at night time you can actually see just here um, you will actually see the light uh, flashing. Okay, and of course you can see it in the reticle. There we go. The MSN people are trying, it looks like, to minimise the number of mounting brackets they have. Um, I've got at least two different types, um, and they have varying thicknesses of sort of holes through here. What they're trying to do is kind of have one sort of bracket that will do the job for all of their scopes and all of their accessories. This one here has actually got a hot shoe mount on it as well. So if you were to put your laser in there and pop that into your hot shoe, you could use the laser to help you target find, or indeed your polar scope to help you target find maybe deep sky objects or something along those lines. So we've got these 3D printed screws um, to hold it all in place and it mounts just in the normal way. Now I've got one front and back. Now, what you'll find with this one, I think the Type B is different. I think the Type B is slightly slimmer and it will go further into the tube. Um, this one doesn't go very far in. So if I just turn the tripod round, you can see what I mean. So this one here only goes in, you know, around about half an inch or so. But Honestly, don't let that worry you. There's a temptation to think it's not solid and it's not stable, but here's the trick. When it's in there, just make sure that this grub screw is nice and tight. Make sure that your spirit level is been leveled, is in the center position, because that's going to make sure that your reticle is pointing you know, up and down, straight up and down at the 12 o'clock position. Now, avoid the temptation, if you've got an extra screw, there might be a temptation to put that screw here at the bottom. Your thinking being that that is gonna make it more secure and less likely to wobble. Don't do that, here's why. If I do this, and I probably what I might do, let's have a think about, um, I will turn it this way for you. There we go. I'll tell you what we'll do, let's just tilt it up so you can see. 
If you put a screw top and bottom, what you've basically done now is made a pivot. And you can see this wobbles quite a lot. So don't recommend that. So we're going to loosen off this bottom one and just make sure that you've got one of them tightened because what that will do is it will push the, the MSN down uh, into, or sorry, the polar scope down into the tube. It'll be parallel with the tube and it will lock in position much, much better. And if I do that, you can see now that really, you know, negligible movement, really hardly any movement. And as soon as you release, it just pops back to the center position as well. Alex McGregor did a really, really good video explaining about mounting various scopes and such like. So, uh, and so don't worry about the fact it doesn't go massively in there. I'll be honest, if it did go in t more, I would have been happier, um, but uh, that's just the way it is, and it still does work. So, that's just about it. So in future, what I can do is I can put this now onto my nice lightweight, if you like, travel tripod, my favorite tripod, and, um, and life would be a lot easier when I use the right angle finder because I can be a lot, lot lower down. Uh, in fact, let's just go and have a look. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, once you've focused the reticle in uh, the poloscope by rotating this wheel and you pop this on here, you also need to focus this here. There's no reticle in here, but you basically you'll be able to see the reticle from the poloscope. So you also need to turn this ring so that this focuses on that. Here we go. We've got the angle finder uh, fitted now, and I've got the tripod there. It's at its, um, its sort of highest setting, and it's just at a very, very nice position for me to just look through the reticle, look through the right angle finder, and I can see everything uh, I need to see, which is, Fabulous. Um, there's also just here. There's actually a one and two times magnification. So what that will do is that will zoom you into the reticle, one times and two times, so you can be super precise. There we go, and we'll just pop that back on. So you can see a lot more comfortable. It's just nicer to be looking down than it is to be trying to get down or oh, all the way down here. Okay. But there's more and they don't promote this on the website but they should do because what we can also do is we can take the polo scope out and included with the kit are all these little adapters for different types of cameras So pretty much whichever camera you've got, there will be an adapter for you. And of course, the one I want is the Nikon one. Okay, and uh, let's take, pop the flashing on. Samsung, that's a Canon. That's a Nikon F4, F5, so that's the round one for the Nikons. Then we've got, here we go, the Nikon square one. And this finally is for Minolta and Dynax. Is we can remove this 3D printed adapter that allows this to fit on the poloscope. We can take that off. We fit our camera mount adapter into this slot. There you go, nice snug fit. Then on the back of the camera, we need to take off the existing eyepiece. So in the case of the Nikons, you just push that up. There we are. And now this will go onto the camera and effectively I have a nice sort of low level setup or something like that so I can now look through here or I could have the camera sort of you know a nice low angle sort of shot if I wanted to um, maybe do ground shots and things like that I can also turn it to the right and to the left so I can get a nice comfortable position and that is a little bonus and they don't actually mention that on the website so I think this is really useful so even if you're not using it for your astrophotography take it with you and it's quite good for your nice low angle shots if you haven't got a flip out screen so there you go guys so I hope that covers everything 
for the poloscope and the new right angle finder and I hope you find that useful. I'll post links down below for the tripod and the MSM products and obviously this new guy as well. So if you found that useful please like, subscribe, you know all the stuff and uh, I will hopefully see you on other videos. Lots and lots of videos on different mounting options. Uh, go and have a look at my playlist. I'll put a link below. All the best. See you soon. Bye.